We continue now at the tab of Daf Pei Beis Amid Aleph from Maseches Ksubis. This is Ksubis Daf 82a. And the previous Amid, the Gemara was discussing a situation where you have a Yavam and a Shomeris Yavam that are waiting to do Yibam. And you have a situation where all the property that this brother stands to inherit, it's all really mortgaged towards the Ksuba. And the Gemara said that he's not supposed to really sell any of the property. He can't do anything with the property. And Rav Yosef said on the previous summit that applies even B'dyevit. In other words, not only can he not sell the property, but let's say he does try to sell the property, it will not be a good sale. And Rav Yosef brought a proof from a brisa, And the brisa talked about a situation where the brother who stands to inherit the property, he also happens to owe money to the brother who died. And so the Bryce over there says a similar idea. The Bryce says that what he has to do is he has to convert that money that he owes. He has to convert it into land, and he can't touch that land. He can only touch the payros, again, because that land is mortgaged towards the ksuba. And so the Gemara says, you see from there, even in a situation, of Yosef says, even in a situation, Bidiyevit, where he already has the money, he has to go ahead and convert the money into property and allow it to be mortgaged into the ksuba. And so the Gemara said on the previous summit that Brisa was not an authoritative Brisa. And the last, re- the last reason the Gemara gave for that was because really here, if the brother died and all that's left is really the widow, he can say to the widow, you're not even a party of this discussion. You're not even a litigant. And therefore, it's irrelevant. I don't owe the money to anyone. And so therefore, it doesn't make sense what the Brisa is saying, that this person has to worry about the debt and convert it into land and mortgage it over for the Ksuba. That does not make sense. But the Gemara says, no, that's not really a reason to say the Brisa the is not authoritative because Dilma Rebbe Nassan, he maybe this Brisa is actually authored by Rebbe Nassan. Rashi over here says, Dilma Bahanami Lota. It's not a mistake, this Brisa. To Rebbe Nassan, he demotzi and mizev and nosen lezev because over here what you really have is he has a debt that he has to his brother who died, but his brother who died has a debt called the Ksuba to the wife. And so therefore it's one person who owes another person who owes another person. So really we say, according to Rabbi Nassan, it is as if there's a direct Correspondence between the first person and the third person. The Tanya's we learned in a bris. So Rabbi Nosson, no, Rabbi Nosson says, "Minayin lenosha bechaveru, mona bechaveru, bechaveru." How do we know that? Let's say a person owes his friend a hundred, and his friend owes another person a hundred. In other words, you have Reuven owes Shimon, and Shimon owes, owes Levi. Minayin shemotzin mizev and osin lezeh. How do we know that we can do, do directly from Reuven to Levi? You can cut out the middleman, cut out Shimon. It's as if there is a court case between Reuven and Levi, and that we learn from a pasuk. Tam and lower. You have to give it to the person who he's guilty to, meaning to the original person who's owed the money. So over here also, it is as if there's a litigation directly between the Yavam and the Shomeris Yavam, and therefore it would make sense, the Brisa could be true, that you have to mortgage this loan, you have to take this loan rather that you owe the money and convert it into property, and then mortgage it towards the Ksuba. That would make sense, and again, that would be a proof to what Rav Yosef said, that even B'dievet, we say that, that this is true, that the sale is that sales are not not going to be a good sale with this property. But then the Gemara says, Ella rather, the reason why this Bryce is not authoritative is because Lo Eshkechantana de Machmir Che Chumre Bixuba. We don't find the Tana that combines both of the Chumras that we just discussed. Ella Ikar Rebbe Meir, Ikar Rebbe Nasan. Either you're going to say a Chumra like Rebbe Meir, or you'll say a Chumra like Rebbe Nasan, you won't say both. In other words, another Chumra that this Bryce was employing was this was ta- talking about Metaltalin. The loan that he owes his brother who died is no different than Metaltalin. And we said that this Bryce of Fowler's Rebbe Meir, that even Metaltalin can be mortgaged towards the Ksuba. And now we're also saying this Bryce of Fowler's Rebbe Nassan, that if it's Noshe Bechavero, Mona Bechavero, Bechavero, Motsin Mizev and Osin Lazeh, to combine both of those Chumras, we never find that, and therefore this Bryce has no authority. And the Gemara continues, Amar Rava Rava says in Cain, if so, Hainu de Shamana Leili Abaye de Amar Zuei in a Mishnah. This explains what Abaye said, because Abaye said this is not an authoritative Brisa. Velo Yadana Maihi, I didn't know what he was referring to. Now I understand that he's referring to this Brisa for the reason we just gave. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Hahu Gavra de Nafla Le Yavama Bemasa Mechasia. There was an individual who the Yavama fell before him in Masa Mechasia. In other words, she was a Shomeris Yavam, and she was waiting to do Yibam with the Yavam. So Ba'achul Ba'achul so his brother, meaning the Yavam's brother, he wanted to disqualify the Yavama from doing Yibam by giving her a get. Same as the story on the previous Amud. Amar Le, so the Yavam said to his brother, My Daitach, why are you doing this? What is your thinking? Imishum Nichse, if it's because of the property, you don't want me to inherit all of the, the property of the, our brother who died. Therefore, you're trying to disqualify the Yavam, because again, the Yavam, after he performs the Yavam, he gets all of the property of the brother who died. So he says, No, I'm not Nichse Pligna Loch. I'm going to split the property with you. Don't worry about it. Exactly like the story on the previous summit. So Amar Le, so the brother said back to the Yavam, Mistafina Davadit Lik, 
Pumbadisa Ramwa. No, but I'm afraid you're going to do to me exactly what happened in Pumbadisa with the swindler. Again, that was the story in the previous Amud. After the, the Yavam actually did the Yavam, he took it back. He said he didn't want to divide up any of the property. And that's where Rav Yosef said, well, since all of the property any, anyway was mortgaged for the Ksuba, you're not allowed to do anything with the property. Him saying he was going to divide it was worthless. So this brother says to the Yavam, I'm afraid you're not actually going to split the property with me. Amar lay. So then the Yavim said to his brother, Iboy is plug lach mehashta. Well, if you really want, let's just divide it right now. And so the Gemara says, Amar mar baravashi, mar baravashi said, Afal gav, even though the chiyasa Rav Dimi, Amar Rav Yochanan, that when Rav Dimi came, he said that Rav Yochanan said, the following halacha, Omer l'chaveiro, if somebody says to his friend, Leichu meshoch parazu, go ahead and do a meshicha on this cow, which is a kind of a kinyan. But it's not actually going to be a kinyan until after 30 days. So Rabbi Yochanan Paskin, that that is a good kinyan. After 30 days, it's going to be a good kinyan. Even if it's standing out in the meadow, even if it's in the swamp, it's not in the person's property. After 30 days, it's still going to be a kinyan. So you see that you can do the act of the Kenyan at one point in time, and it takes effect later. And so the question is, maybe over here as well that should work. Here the person says, I'll divide it up right now. But the Gemara says, no, it's no comparison. Hasim over there, biyadu, there it's in his control. At the time that he's doing the Mashiach, he has control, he has the ability to make this Kenyan. But hachala biyadu, but over here, this Yavam, they haven't actually performed the Yivam yet. There is no inheritance. He has no control over the property. It's not in his ability to say that we're splitting the property now, and therefore whatever Kenyan he's making with his brother is not going to work. It is not effective. And the Gemara continues, Valkiyasa Ravin Amar Rabbi Yochanan, but one second. When Ravin came, he, he quoted Rabbi Yochanan differently. He said that Rabbi Yochanan said, Lokani, that it's actually not a Kenyan in a situation where you do a Mashiach on a cow and you say the Kenyan is going to be 30 days later. So we have a contradiction just in general in this case of the cow where you want the Kenyan to take effect after 30 days. What did Rabbi Yochanan say? And to that, the Gemara says, Lokash, it's not difficult. In one case, he's saying after 30 days, it's going to be a retroactive Kenyan. Then it would actually be effective. But in a case where he didn't say we want it to be retroactive, but we want the Kenyan to actually take effect 30 days later, so there it is not going to be effective. And the Gemara continues, They asked Ula the following question, Let's say the brother performs the Yivam, and then he divides the property with his other brothers, and he said, It's nothing. Again, you're not allowed to do anything with that property. It's all mortgage for the ksuba. And then they ask another question. What if he tries to divide the property and then only afterwards he does the yibam, meaning he does the division of the property before the yibam, what would be the halacha? And again, he answered, He hasn't done anything. And so the Gemara says, Maskif Lord of Sheshis, Rav Sheshis asks, Hashta Yibem Veachrika Chilik. If the halacha is that when he already did the Yibem and then he divides, Loas of Aloklam, even in that case, he, he, the Kenyan is nothing. So it's obvious in the other one, Chilik Veachrika Chibem. If he divides the property and only afterwards he does the Yibem, at this point she's only, she's only a Shomeris Yavim. So, mean, boy, do we even need to say it in that case? Of course, in that case, the property is still considered mortgaged and he can't do anything in the pro- with the property. So once you've already answered the case of Yibem Veachrika, that his Kenyan is ineffective. It's certainly ineffective in the in the other case. And so to that, the Gemara says, Shnei Maisim The Gemara says, no, really, it was just two independent questions. It wasn't like they were asked at the same time. Happens to be there were two questions, and you're right. Once you had the answer for Yibim, Chilik, that that's not effective, obviously, Chilik, V'yachrakach, Yibim, would not be effective as well. And the Gemara continues, Kiyosa Ravin, when Ravin came from Eretz Yisrael, Amr Reish Lakish, he said that Reish Lakish said, Ben Yibim, V'yachrakach, Chilik, Ben Chilik, V'yachrakach, Yibim, Loasa V'lo Klum, again, the same thing. Whether the Yibim was done first, whether the division of the property was first, it doesn't matter, it is not going to be effective. V'yilchasa, and indeed, that is the halacha, Loasa V'lo Klum, the Kenyan is not effective. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, And the Chachamim say, If there are fruits that are attached to the ground, so that belongs to him, that belongs to the Yavim, that is not considered mortgage for the Ksuba. And the Gemara asks on, the, on this, am I, Why should that be true? All of the property should be considered Achroi and should be considered guaranteed, should be mortgaged towards the Ksuba. So why is it considered Shalom? And the Gemara says, Amr Reish Lakish, Reish Lakish says, Tani Shalai, you're correct. You should amend the Mishnah to say it belongs to her, not that it belongs to him. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. The Mishnah said, Kansa Harehi Ke'ishto, if he goes ahead and he marries her, so then she's like his wife in all respects. And the Gemara says, Lamai Hilchasa, for what practical halacha, what is the Mishnah referring to? 
And the Gemara answers, Amr Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Chanin, and Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Chanin says, Lomar means to say, Shemagor Shebegetu Machsira, that number one, once he marries her, he divorces her with a get, and number two, that if he does divorce her, then he can take her back if he wants, he can remarry her. And so the Gemara says, Megor Shebeget Pshita, he divorces her with a get, isn't that obvious? And the Gemara says, no, it's not obvious, because Mahu Detema, what might you have thought? V'yivma Amar Rachmana, the Pasuk says, V'yivma, V'adayin Yibum in Harishon Amalai, it's still considered in the process of Yibum as well, even after the marriage. Rashi over here says, Adayin Yibum in Harishon Amalai, Afa Pishalakacha, even though he took her as a wife, because that's what the Pasuk says, says V'lakcha, V'yivma. So maybe there's like a Lakicha, there's like a marriage, but it's still also considered in the process of Yibum. And so therefore, maybe, as the Gemara over here says, if it's Yibum in Harishon Amalai, Lo Tizgi La Beget, Ela Bechalisa, it's not enough to give her a get. Maybe he has to give her a get and chalitza. In other words, if this Yavam marries the Shomeris Yavam, maybe it's considered an act of marriage, but also an act of Yibam. It has the, the, these two statuses, and therefore both are required to separate from her. Maybe the get is required and the chalitza is required. Kamash Malon. So that's what the Pasuk is teaching us, that once he marries her, all that is required is a get. And the Gemara says, Machzira. So then it said if he wants to remarry her after the divorce, he could. Again, the Gemara says, Pshita, isn't that obvious? And we'll continue with this discussion in the next video. And Pay Bays, Ahmed Bays.